Johnny Shahidi yeah. from Shot Studios. Back back to this. Hannah, what's Johnny's biggest strength? Uh, Johnny's biggest strength is that he can operate wherever he is. I feel like he, he's never going to end up in jail, but say he is <laughs> in jail, he can still operate and manage shots to an extreme level. And I know that, um, you know, I watched Lele's podcast and, and we were kind of going through the whole shots list. But what's crazy about the shots team and Johnny and Sammy is that they don't only manage um, creators, but he's also managing YG. He's managed Floyd crazy. Mayweather for 10 years. Ozuna now. <sighs> um, yeah, the list goes on. So mm-hmm. like not only does he delve into the creative social media aspect, but also he's a powerhouse in the music industry. Oh, say, say, I, I would say, I would say something along that those lines of his connections. Yeah, oh right? yeah, I'm sure. And and he's got and he's got a book. And now we talked about this for like an hour mm-hmm. before Lele came on. You want to write a book to teach people how to monetize on YouTube on th- with things mm-hmm. other than ad space, right? You want to teach them how to sell products. Yeah, yeah. No, I want to, uh, <clears throat> I want to teach all the up and coming creators, you know, what to do. Um, there's so many of them, you know, every day someone's mm-hmm. turning 13 mm-hmm. and, um, you know, also there's tens of millions of Americans without work right now. And I feel, you know, they could think outside the box and, and do all become want, social media creators. Yeah. I mean, I might, and, 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 and some, there are different and ways, right? Yeah. Like there's a football coach somewhere out there in Nebraska who's without a job right now, you know, and he could create a YouTube channel and teaching kids how to become a quarterback, you know, right. like there's just so many different things and the things that we've all learned. And I think really, um, especially you, Logan, and, and and a lot of us from Vine, just, you know, Vine was such a sinking ship and we got so lucky to get out and move that following somewhere else. And, you know, sometimes I feel real bad for some of the TikTok creators who are just TikTok only and they're so oh, yeah. dependent on TikTok. We talk about this all, all the time. time. And I feel, I feel bad for them. I feel bad. I feel bad for the Vine creators <clears throat> who didn't get off Vine and diversify. Sure. I feel bad for the YouTube creators who were only focused on you know, their YouTube channel only and didn't grow outside of YouTube or build the businesses that you guys were talking about earlier. You know, I, I just I really feel bad because it's got to be, you know, you're on a all time high when you're doing well. But mm-hmm. once the algorithm doesn't like you, like <sighs> there's nothing you can do to get the algorithm to bring you back. What you've done is magical, right? It's you know, it's uh, maybe once once in a lifetime, you know, bouncing yeah. back the last couple of years and what you've done with Impulsive and Maverick Club and, yeah. and Maverick as a as a brand in general. But people don't think that. But imagine we could actually share what you've done at a different scale with anybody else. You know? Sure, sure. I, th- I think it's a phenomenal, yeah. a brilliant idea. I just, for me, why I haven't written the book yet is because the things I'm doing are still highly protected IP. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm still very uh, hesitant to share my trade secrets. Yeah. Are you putting <laughs> all on the line in this book? Yeah, I think, you know, it, I think it's kind of obvious what we do, you know, like, you know, so I might as well write a book out of it. I mean, people steal from us all the time. People are always trying to, you know, um, copy what we're obvious doing. obvious to us, though. But to, to, I mean, there are, there are strategies you can take that any person could follow, like literally like a roadmap to become a somewhat at least successful content creator. If you have that it factor, like a Hannah or like a Lele, you can, you could skyrocket and take it to the highest mm-hmm. level. But there's a model and a formula that I'm sure you're writing about in your book that like anyone can take to, to achieve their success yeah, on and, social. And I'm not trying to, you know, I mean, hopefully one person or two people or a few people out of the book go and become a 20 million followed or subscribed yeah. person. But I'm, I'm trying to find that uh, uh, the book is going to be really catered to the person who just needs to make a living. You micro, you're talking about micros. Yeah. You're trying to create ex- effective micro yeah, creators. I mean, if, I mean if, you know, going back to the tens of millions of, um, Americans without a job right now because of the pandemic this year, you know, uh, an average mm-hmm. salary, you know, for an American, sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars a year. So if someone could just make five grand a month, you know, off ads and so or merch, sure. you know, what mm-hmm. I mean, like that's sure. that's who I'm really going after. That's, it's like that's right here. I can I can yeah. grab that and reach it. Any person can. That's that's mm-hmm. and especially during a pandemic for, too. Sure, that's, a, that's, a, that's sure. the thing. The now's families. the time to capitalize. Now, now's the family. That's that's the book is for them. It's not for the next Hannah Stocking. At the next Logan, the next Jake, the next Mike, the next Lele. It's more for that person who's just sitting at home, needs to feed some fam- their family. Regarding that top tier, tier creator status, I got a question because I, I said on a podcast, I said, I think today it's harder to become a top tier creator than it is to get into the NBA. Do you think that's true? I think about that sometimes too. Um, a top tier, I'm talking James Charles. 
David Dobrik, <laughs> Mr. Beast, Lele Pons, Hannah Stocky, like top tier creator. Well, just statistically, there's way there's way less top tier creators than there are NBA players. So, so like I kind of got like scoffed yeah, that, but statistically, right. I'm not yeah, fucking no, wrong. Like, I mean, this shit is, especially especially now, it is so oversaturated. He's gonna make his book. Cheryl from Arkansas is gonna <laughs> start <laughs> cooking a cooking James channel. Charles. Everyone's <laughs> trying to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, everyone's trying to do it. Like NBA people, NBA stars. Something genetically they're born with, right? Like the even pool, the NBA stars much are smaller. vlogging now too. Right? Yeah, they I've are. seen it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen Everybody's it. trying to way. get into the yeah. content creation yeah. engine. I, it's definitely a future. But the thing is, um, what you're talking about, top creators, every platform you know has, you know, five to ten top creators, and there's only a handful of platforms where you know there's what 32 NBA teams. You know, and each team has at least 12 players. Yeah, you don't even have to start. You don't even have to start. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you could be one of the backup players. Yeah. Or but it's, um, yeah, it's definitely, you know, uh, I think as more platforms come around, I think you'll see more creators and, uh, you know, there'll be a lot more on everyone and everyone's going to have their niche. But, you know, the one advice I have to give to all of them, because many of them are listening to your podcast, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, you know, diversify as well. Don't diversify. be dependent on one place. Yeah, Talk okay, about that guys. all the time. If, yeah. if, if, if one thing... <clears throat> burn to the ground tomorrow. Any mm -hmm. one thing, it doesn't matter what it is. You got to have 15 to 20 other things to pick it up. Like, that, honestly, and that's, that's what that's, irritates that's me when like TikTokers are like, oh no, I will never join YouTube. Or some YouTubers are like, oh, I will never join right. TikTok. And mm -hmm. it's just like, I think it's so important to be a top tier creator. You have to be on every single platform. But even, but even that, like you'll have the people that, that do diversify outside of their core channel and they create all these ancillary platforms. They're thinking too small. Cause I'm trying to create IP outside of digital creation. And I wrote a fucking book. Mm -hmm. I'm turning like, how far does it go? I want to do stand up next. That and then I want to do TV. You know what I'm saying? Like those, those are the decisions you can't even think that small. Like, Oh no, 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 no. I'm good. I have a TikTok and an Instagram. No, fuck that. Mm -hmm. Write a cookbook, Right. be a tattoo artist, <laughs> go way outside and start to create, create those new verticals of success for yourself. That if tomorrow you know, somebody says, yo, the internet's done. What the fuck are you, what are you going to do now? Now the internet's done. It's not going to happen. But like, think that drastically. If this all falls down tomorrow, what is going to pick up the pieces in my life? Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. Agreed, agreed. I mean, not to be like Hannah and throw it back at you guys, but, um, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, I, I feel sometimes I, I, I think about this and I even talk to Sammy about it as I feel, um, Merch is what really helped save Logan. Oh, my you know, God. like if, if yeah, you don't absolutely. have the merch business, absolutely. You know what I mean, there wouldn't be this new fresh breath in the last year and a half, two years. You know, I uh, I remember when I first got into merch, uh, Jake had just started. I think he had been doing it for like three, four weeks, maybe a month in. And I was like, "Yo, you, are you making like good money with your merch?" We had just both been st just just started to pop off on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Yeah, man, like this is this is the wave. You have to do this." Then I came out with Maverick. Next thing you know, I made what well, I think this is public, uh, 30, 40 million dollars in one year. In one year, my first year doing merch, I was like, holy fucking shit. There's a real business here. Like it was the first time I really understood the power of a creator mm -hmm. and being able to move an audience outside of said platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Yeah. Except now, I mean, we're all feeling this, all creators. <laughs> merch is so oversaturated. It's not, it's not the thing anymore, right? Like you, there's a few creators like, uh, no boys. boys who are having their, you know, Danny 30, 40, 50, $60 million years. But i like Mr. Beast probably too, but besides them, it's such a hard industry to break. So now us as creators, and you're probably going through this as well. It's like, what's next? What's yeah. the next big money pop where someone's, some creator is going to make 50 to a hundred million dollars doing this. Tech. What is it, Johnny? Tech. It's a, it's a product. It's the same thing that happened in the hip hop world. You know, in the hip hop world, you know, you're looking at Dr. Dre who got beats. into beats. Yeah. You know, 50 Cent got into vitamin water. You know, but like, you know, um, uh, Jay Z invested in Uber. You know, like, you know, I think getting into other products. Um, I do, I do have to say one thing about merch though is I think merch is saturated for anyone who's just trying to sell a shirt. But if you're actually like creating like a movement, you sure. know, or a culture around your merch, sure. I think it's here. <laughs> I think it's here to stay, you know, like, like Maverick, right? Like Maverick to me is not a t-shirt. You yeah. know, Maverick is like being, part, you know, I, I was, I'm going to steal that pillow over there, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, I, you yeah. know what I mean? Not yeah. because I need that pillow. It's because like, I'm, I'm going to be part of the Maverick movement. Yeah. Has a meaning. Yeah. 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 Sure. But even, even, even creating a brand, like, how, like 
the brand world and uh, apparel. I want to start a clothing line. Like oversaturated. Every yeah, influencer every wants to start a clothing yeah, line. Yeah, like yeah. same thing. But that's what I, I said this on yesterday's or the last episode actually is like I realized, especially with the new shit we're dropping, like we're here to stay. Yeah. And I think it's because it's not just a, a piece it's of a culture. Clothing. It's, it's a culture. culture. You know, exactly. she wants to like, own communication, you know, on a t shirt. You know, mm. um, you know, um uh, Justin Bieber has Drew House, right? It's yeah. like a culture. It's not, yeah. you know, you know, and, and I don't know his exact numbers, but I'm sure they're going to sell a lot more than just, you know, um, one day, you know, more than his, you know, when he had his face, you know, with his, with his Absolutely. tour merch. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because it's a culture. You're going to see out people, his fans are going to buy it, which is who bought all his tour merch. But then you're going to see like other people want to be part of the culture. The money team by Mayweather, you know, yeah. uh, you know what, you know, we, I remember Mayweather's, um, it was just so mind blowing when we our first month uh, with uh, Floyd's uh, merch on themoneyteam.com, we had like fifty percent decline credit cards. And there was someone in the office who said like, "Well, how do you know? Why are these people trying to buy the money team when they don't have money? <laughs> you know?" And, but, but it was it's not about it's not about the, you know. I mean, it was more like a mindset, aspirational. Money team, yeah, I want to be. Like I want to be. Heart. Yes, you know. what I mean, that's what money team right. is, and that's why money team has become. It's not rich people buying TMT. It's people that just feel rich at heart you know mm. and when you build that culture you know i think your your brand will be here at whatever it is whether it's a merch or your own person product podcast book it's a culture you you're know? starting to see you're starting to see a lot of new <clears throat> products and ip pop up right now if you're in this space like you and like like we all are within the next two years the people watching this episode right now will see the products that we're talking like like, dude, Nelk Boys is going to do their own booze, and it's going to go crazy. Yeah. Oh, gonna, the yeah. beer is going to come out. It's going to happen. I was you telling, know what I'm I was telling Kyle, I, I was with Kyle. We had dinner a week ago. Yeah. And um, I think I to may have told you this yeah, when we were on a call. Is, uh, we were in Newport Beach, and I saw more people wear full send merch than actual face coverings, face masks. In Newport <laughs> Beach. No, yeah. Yeah. Nobody's like, wearing face masks. No one's wearing face But they all have full send. Oh, they have full send. You know, like, That's insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so it was just mind-blowing, right? But How? it's a culture. Full send's a culture. Woo! <laughs>